Magandang araw mga kaibigan. Welcome to the UCM Interface Bible Study Podcast. Isang Bible Study Podcast by Pinoy's for Pinoy's hosted by UCM Interface, ang Young Adults Community ng Union Church of Manila. Taglish conversational, expository slash inductive study method. Di kami experts, most of us are young professionals but we do try our best to study context and let scripture speak for itself. Sa aming mga book studies and special topics, yung goal namin is to provide you with materials to help you live, work, speak, and serve as a follower of Jesus Christ. Bago magsimula, thanks for joining us. At kung trip nyo tong ginagawa namin, please subscribe and share with your friends and family. Okay, sa episode na ito, dalawa lang kami nandito. Kami lang ni Rainier. Hey, kumusta kayong lahat? Ako po si Rainier, ang Young Adult Ministry Director ng Union Church of Manila. Kung matagal na kayo nakikinig sa amin, isa ako sa mga mainstays dito. Um, where are you now? Ako, nandito ako siyempre sa Mandaluyong, as usual. As usual. Oh. And uh, ako naman si Gutsch, isang commercial voice artist. At nandito naman sa Antipolo pa rin. Sabi, no? Ilang po na tayong nakakulong sa bahay natin. Ah. Tatagal. Pero okay lang kasi tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung podcast natin. Tuloy yung programa. Yes, marami tayong maibabahagi ng mga content para sa ating mga listeners. Uh, and so if you guys have been regularly listening to us, we thank you so much. Sana uh, inga, join our community sa Facebook, sa Instagram, and maybe send us a message and ano yung parang um, itinuro sa inyo ng Panginoon. Magiging sobrang saya kami if we hear about those things. Okay, so kakatapos lang natin ng Daniel, yung ating last season. Tinapos rin natin yung dalawang episodes natin ng misinterpreted verses in the Bible, which is laging spicy at laging uh, masaya gawin. <laughs> at ito, ngayon, magsisimula na tayo sa bagong season natin. Yeah! At ano ito ang ating bagong season? Uh, and this season is the parables in the Gospel of Luke. Pero syempre, napakarami kasi ng parables na yan sa Gospel of Luke. Kaya pipili lang tayo ng ilan. Oh, for this season, we're probably just gonna have maybe around 13, 15, oh, right. mga ganyan. Hindi pa namin na figure out, but it's somewhere around that. Andito yung mga familiar ones. I think most people would know Good Samaritan, Prodigal Son, Lost Coin, oh, Lost Coin, Lost Sheep. Yeah, no? Every episode, we'll be discussing a parable or maybe a set of parables for some episodes. And para lang doon sa mga magtatanong kung bakit nga ba hindi atin gawa ng inductive Bible study yung buong look. Aabutin uh, tayo ng mga ilang taon. Baka magsawa kayo sa amin. <laughs> tatlong taon. <laughs> Puro look lang, tatlong taon. Oo. Bago natin i-discuss yung ating first parable, itong episode na to is a short introduction. At meron tayong dalawang bagay na tatalakayin, which I think are very important for us to take note of as we do this study. The first one is yung overview ng Gospel of Luke. So, Yan. background, sino sumulat, bakit sinulat, mga ganyan, ano yung themes. Okay. At pangalawa, Ano nga ba ang parables? Mm-hmm. Kasi yun yung thing, eh, na I think we're so familiar with parables right. na nawawala na minsan yung ano ba talaga yung ibig sabihin dahil sanay na sanay na tayo. So ano nga ba ang parables as a biblical genre? And then ano yung mga kailangan natin i-consider when we go through parables? And certain misconceptions leading to misinterpretations. Di ba? Yes. <laughs> okay. Overview of Luke. Sino sumulat? Kailan sinulat? At para kanino? So yung author, I see... Luke. Pero sino si Luke? Sino nga ba siya? Mm, sige. Itong si Luke ay kaibigan din ito ni Paul. Nakasama na ito ni Paul sa kanyang missionary journey. He's not a Jew, he's a Gentile. At isa rin siyang physician. So he's a physician and he's a Gentile. In fact, he's the only non-Jewish gospel writer. That's correct. Bigyan din natin ng reference. Saan ba natin alaman itong mga bagay na ito? Ano bang saan natin pinaghuhugot ito? Hindi namin na invento to, no? Oh, hindi natin invento to. <laughs> Scripture din ang nagsabi na kung sino si Luke. Sa isa sa mga sulat ito ni, ni Paul, no? To the churches in Colossae. Sabi niya sa Colossians 4.14, Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. As he closes his letter to the Colossians, dito nabanggit si Luke, the physician. We'll just mention yung date of writing nito, different opinions, pero pwede siyang before nung death ni Paul at AD 64. Right. Or it could be a little after the fall of Jerusalem ng AD 70. Dahil may strong possibility that Luke may have used the Gospel of Mark as one of his sources. Pwede yun, that's 
a possibility. At yung audience, sinulat niya to para kay Theophilus. Theophilus. Oh. And the readers are also Gentile Christians. Yun yung primary audience niya. And alam natin to dahil dun sa introduction. Right off the bat ng Luke 1. Sinabi niya dito sa Luke chapter 1, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Theophilus ang pangalan. At anong ibig sabihin ng Theophilus? Now, this is a Greek name. Ang ibig sabihin ay lover of God. And they are Gentiles. So itong si Theophilus could be an individual or probably a code name to represent a community of Gentile believers. Ah, okay. Yun ang mga haka-haka ng ibang mga theologians. So, mm-hmm. And also, Luke is actually part one of two. Kasi the part two is Acts. That's right. At the end of Luke, swak pasok agad sa Acts. It was meant to be one account. So yung yung suggestion ng mga tao na if you want to study Luke, tuhog mo na rin sa Acts kasi directly connected. That's right. Ngayon, dito, dito pa lang sa binasa ko sa inyo, sinabi na agad yung isa sa mga major themes. And there's an emphasis on the fulfillment of the promises or the plan of God and it's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Isa yan sa mga ipapakita niya. Dumating na ang Messiah ng Panginoon na siyang sasalba sa kanyang chosen people, Israel, and that this salvation includes the Gentiles. Every kind of marginalized person, the poor, outcast, yan. Jesus Mahalik fulfilled ba? the prophecy and carried out yung kanyang purpose which is to seek and save the lost. Dito rin, may kita natin na uh, dito mismo binanggit na ni Luke dun sa binasa ko sa inyo that this is a parang historical account. Right. Kumbaga, isa si Luke sa mga nauna na dun sa tinatawag natin ngayong investigative journalism. Ah. Uh-huh. Kasi he, he provided an orderly account. So this is historical. So sinasabi rin ni Luke dito that our faith is a historical faith. It's yeah. based on historical events. Ah. Uh-huh. There are evidences. So, napaka-empirical, medyo scientific ng approach niya. So, pagsusulat niya ng gospel bilang isang doktor. That's actually quite amazing because the gospels were written because people believed. That's it's right. not the other way around. They didn't write up something, people read it, then people believed what was written. Right. People already believed before the Bible was even written. That's why they wrote the gospel accounts. Tama. Because there were so many people who believed and they wanted to make an account. The Christian faith is a historical faith at saka the Christian faith is a verifiable faith. Kaya siya carefully investigated in an orderly sequence. You can verify it. Ang maganda dito sa project ni Luke na ito, most likely what he did was kung ito nga nasulat no, before the destruction of the temple in AD 70, na interview pa niya lahat Buhay pa si Mary. Nakausap niya, ano, ano bang nangyari sa'yo no? nung, nung binalita sa yung angel na magpupuntis ka, ganyan. Sino ba yung mga shepherds? Ano ba nangyari? Anong binisita ka, ganyan. Well, all I'm saying is, he investigated. Yeah, and there were many eyewitness accounts nga. Eh. Sabi nga dito sa Luke 1, 1 to 4, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Mm. And these were the same people who were Martyred. Right. Kasi itong si Luke, hindi naman siya eyewitness eh. Kaya kailangan niyang lumapit dun sa mismo mga nakakita kay Jesus. So, that's a very simple overview of the Gospel of Luke. Ayan. Okay. Parables naman tayo. Ano nga ba tong parables? Define nga natin kung ano tong parable. No? Uh, and para din sa audience natin, a lot of this information, I mean, we, we studied from several sources, but one of the big sources that we got this from is yung How to Study the Bible for All It's Worth ni Gordon Fee. So this is written by Gordon Fee and then yung co-author niya si Douglas Stewart. The yung question natin ngayon, after natin i-figure out yung background ng Luke is, what is a parable? And a parable is an illustration or an analogy. Tama. Which Jesus uses a lot. Diba? Salt and light. Wise man who built his house on a rock. 
harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pati yung, yung sinabi niyo doon sa Pharisees, yung... The whitewashed tombs. Oh, yung mga ganyan, di ba? Oh, whitewashed tombs. Sa labas, maganda yung tsura, pero sa loob, patay. A parable is an illustration. Pero, what makes a parable different is that ang parable, merong kwento. Tama. May story movement siya. Kaya yung, alam natin, ang mga popular ones would be prodigal son. May parang drama, may parang pang stage play. Right, Ganyan, right. Diba? Ito yung mga matatawag nating true parables. Kasi meron siyang direksyon yung kwento niya. Uh, now, in terms of analogies, tsaka mga illustrations, ang closest comparison to parables would be yung tinatawag na allegories. Tulad nung popular one, which is yung allegory of the cave ni Plato. Plato. Okay. Pwede rin siguro masabi na allegory yung tortoise and the hare. I think so. Uh, yung, yung Icarus Wings, yeah, yung yeah. parang uh, lumipad masyado malapit sa araw, tapos namatay. Pero meron yung, yung mga allegories, meron yung mga katumbas yan sa atin eh. Parang halimbawa, yung kwento ng nanay ni Jose Rizal sa kanya, yung tungkol dun sa gamo-gamo na lumapit sa apoy. Mga ganun, ano? Uh, mga ganyan. May gamo-gamo na lumapit dun sa apoy kasi masyadong curious. And then... Uh, Nasunog, namatay, ganun. Ayun nga, something similar about parables and allegories is that meron silang kwento, parang may symbolic elements na, yeah. ay ito, ito, siguro tungkol to sa ganyan, ay ito, meron tinuturo to sa ganito. Pero, ang parables and allegories are not the same. They're not. Kasi, pag sinabi mong allegory, halos lahat ng elemento may symbolism. So parang sa tortoise and the hare, for example, merong tortoise na mabagal, merong hare na mabilis, tapos yung merong race. Yung hare, pwede yan yung taong mayabang, yung magaling, yung overconfident. Tapos yung tortoise, yan yung medyo slow, medyo humble, and yung steady lang, ganyan. Tapos yung race, pwede yung tungkol sa work, tungkol sa skills, or parang pag-reach ng mga goals. Yun yung thing about allegories. Yung application niya, pwedeng kahit ano. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Malaki yung scope ng application. And syempre, may moral yung story. Right. Na pwedeng the slow and steady wins, or yung focused effort wins the long game. And sort of, may pagka, oh, that's nice to know. Parables not just instruct, but also call for a response, particularly from the original audience. Okay. Di ba yung madalas nating sinasabi dito yung though the Bible was written for us, it was not written to us. So ganun din kahit sa parables. May original na kinukwentuhan, may original na konteksto at culture yung original audience. Yeah. Yung sa parables kasi yung nabanggit nga natin na yung sa comparing it to an allegory. Yung allegory, halos lahat ng elemento niya, meron yung significance. It represents something. Sa parable, hindi ganun eh. Otherwise, ang mangyayari sa isang parable, aba, di lahat na lang. Just a lost sheep. Sino yung mga neighbors? Ano ni represent ng neighbors na nag-celebrate kasama ng shepherd na mahanap niya? Lahat na lang, lalagyan mo ng meaning. That's an allegory. Hindi ganun ang parable. Ang parable, hahanapin mo mo lang. Yung tinatawag nga na points of reference. Pero sa parable, hindi yung points of reference ang punto ng parable. Because Jesus was addressing a specific issue or question with a story. Right. Yung isang mentor ko na ang tawag niya dito, story bomb. Kasi pagkatapos niya ikwento, parang boom! Sa pool! Kadalasan nga, iisa lang ang punto ng parable. Everything else falls in line dun sa question or issue na ina-address ni Jesus. Tama. Kasi kadalasan, bago magbigay ng parable si Jesus, may nagtanong. Oo. Actually, may examples ako dito. May apat na examples ako dito. Sige. Something like yung sa bago mag Good Samaritan sa Luke 10.29. But he, yung expert of the law, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? O oh, yan, kwento. May iba pa dyan, um, because the Pharisees were lovers of money. Or to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Tapos may isa pa dito, um, because they supposed that the kingdom of God would appear immediately. That's, uh, I think that's somewhere in the latter part of Luke. Sometimes it's a question or other times it's a criticism and this will respond to the criticism through a parable. Uh, dahil nga sabi natin yun, iisa lang naman yung pinakapunto nga ng parable. Isa lang yung ina-address niya. Kaya halimbawa, pagpunta natin sa Luke 15, nakakagulat. Pagbigay niya nung kwento ng lost sheep, biglang, oops, repentance. Oh. Repentance pala. So, paano naging repentance to? Oh. <laughs> repentance talaga ang theme nito. That being said, because nga may ina-address si Jesus na question or issue or criticism, criticism. 
he meant for these parables to be understood. Yan. Kasi, Uh-oh. like sa chapter 15, sa 18, tsaka sa 19, nagkakwento siya dun sa mga tao na mayroong implication, maintindihan sila. Yeah. Pero kadalasan, hindi pa rin naiintindihan. Oo, oo. Magbibigay ako ng example sa Matthew, the parable of the tenants. Matthew 21.45. TLDR nito, may vineyard. Tapos yung may-ari ng vineyard, nagpadala ng servants. Uh-oh. Tapos pinatay ng tenants ng vineyard. Yung, yung servants. servants. Tapos in the end, yung may-ari, pinadala niya yung sarili niyang anak. Dahil siguro, re-respetuhan nila to. Eh, kaso... Pinatay din nila. Pinatay, pinatay din ng tenants. Din. Oo. So, yung tanong ni Jesus doon, anong gagawin ng may-ari doon sa mga tenants na yun? Ah. Eh, nag ng chief priests and Pharisees na tukul <laughs> sa kanila yung parable. Kaya na bad trip sila. Oh. <laughs> eh, yun yan, naintindihan nila mentally, nakuha nila mentally, pero hindi nakapagbago ng behavior nila. Hindi okay. nakapag-lead to repentance or obedience. So, I guess yung tanong dyan is, nag nga ba talaga nila? Yan. Kasi alam nila sa utak, pero hindi nila alam sa puso. Yun ang pinag-usapan natin dito, Guts, yun yung impact dun sa original audience. They will get the point point right away. Pero sa atin, dahil napaka-remote natin sa panahon kung kailan sinulat to, culturally, historically, napakalayo natin, unfortunately, the parables have to be explained to us. Yeah. Jesus oh. never had to explain the parables to his audience. Gets na agad get ng mga tao. Oh. With one exception, ito yung parable of the soils. The sower soils. Yun yung, uh, yeah, he had to explain that. Uh, and we will get into that in a few episodes uh-huh. in... Uh-huh. Bakit ito pinaliwanag? Oh. Right. Bakit uh-huh. sa lahat ng parables yun lang pinaliwanag? But all the other parables, pag sinabi ni Jesus, he delivers the parable, may impact na sa kanila yun. Either matutuwa sila o magagalit sila, kadalasan nagagalit. <laughs> Kwento sa akin ng kaibigan ko is you really found it fascinating that for a carpenter, for a son of a carpenter, he doesn't have a lot of carpentry examples yeah. na parables kasi lagi niyang kinoconsider yung audience niya. Ano yung magigets na kwento ng audience niya? Right. Diba? Oh, you think oh. that he'd have more examples about his experiences uh, eh. Hindi. The closest would be building your house on a rock. Right. Pero karamihan ng kanyang illustrations may reference to fishing, fishing or they're shepherds. They're agrarian. You know, their society is agrarian. Kaya mga references niya puro doon. Kaya gets agad ng audience kasi context nila to. Yun na nga. So original audience gets nila yon. At dahil tayo hindi natin gets, we had to break down the parables. Yeah. Kailangan pang aralin. Kaya lang, ang disadvantage natin Dyan, hindi ganun kabilis yung impact sa atin kasi kumbaga nag, you, you craft a joke you never explain a joke <laughs> so yeah so inaaral pa natin yung joke kaya nakakatawa to dahil ganyan no? kaya may impact to kaya ito yung punchline kasi ganyan <laughs> when you break down a joke wala na siyang impact hindi na siya nakakatawa sa'yo so minimize na yung impact sa atin in a way to some degree it's minimized kasi nga you had to break it down Sa panahon ni Jesus, hindi na. Dahil lahat ng points of references, alam naman nila. They, they get it. Right. They understand uh, it. And so, yeah. So, that's parables. And again, they're different from allegories. And personally, this is something very difficult for me. Kasi for the longest time, that's what I've been doing. I've been allegorizing parables, looking at every little thing. Ano ibig sabihin ito? Ganyan. And I never even considered the context. Never even considered um, the question that was being addressed. Yung mga ganyan, para sa akin, going through this study, I sort of have to put everything I learned in the past aside, unlearn, and relearn. Now with the inductive Bible study process that we have throughout this podcast. Yeah. And just to summarize our points, may nakita ako dito. I got this from a blog from my the Bible app that I use, the Olive Tree Bible. Five tips on how to read a parable. Una, one thing that we need to understand is that uh, parables are about comparisons. Parables teach one basic lesson. Ito, yung nabanggit natin, may isang punto lang siya palagi. Tapos, we need to focus on endings, not beginnings. Hindi yung simula ng kwento. Titingnan mo mabuti sa pag-aaral mo ng isang parable kung ano yung dulo. O yung punchline, basically. Yung punchline. Okay, isa pa. It's a communication for believers. But it's confusion for the hard-hearted. Pag believer ka, you will get it. Kung baga, nung, when, when Jesus shared these parables to, to his audience, those who belong to his flock, if I may just use that term, they will get it. Those who, are, who do not belong to his flock, hindi nila maintindihan to. It's not a mental thing. It's a, it's a spiritual defect. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And lastly, hindi tayo aral ng aral ng parables for nothing. Parables are meant to be applied. Sinabi nga na sa, kay James, no? sa letter ni James, 
Sabi niya, that we should not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Ganun din, nag apply ito sa parables. Yeah, and so, kaya nga, pinag aral tayo, yung response na hiningi dun sa original audience, we're also called to respond to. It applies to us. It applies to us. And most of the time, it's about repentance. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, change your ways. <laughs> Turn around. Uh, so that's the introduction episode to the parables in Luke. And sabi nga ni Rainier, change your ways. And we're going to be discussing the old and new wineskins in the next episode. That's correct. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So hope you can join us and see you on the next episode in a few weeks. Okay, thank you for listening. See ya. God bless. God bless. Thanks for joining us in the UCM Interface Bible Study Podcast. If you want to know more about our ministry, follow UCM Interface on Facebook and Instagram or email us at ucminterface at gmail.com. Join us in Union Church of Manila, Rada Corner Legaspi, Makati City.